Welcome to this episode of Learning Catalytics in Your Classroom. We'll be hearing from professors who will share their experiences of using learning catalytics in their classroom. The guest for this video will be Terry Austin with questions proposed by Diane Hollister. So hi there, Terry, would you tell, um, give us a little bit of background about you, who you are, what school you teach at, what classes you teach? Hi there, I'm Terry Austin and I teach at Temple College in Temple, Texas, where I teach the two semester anatomy and physiology course, as well as microbiology. So thank you. Could you tell us a little bit about how you are currently using learning catalytics? Let's talk about several scenarios in my classroom. And the first is probably where most instructors will start. The session type or module type is called instructor-led synchronous. That's where the instructor delivers a question and the students answer it. The instructor stops the question and then we just move on. So for me, that's in a typical lecture scenario. I've got a slide deck up on the big screen in front of the classroom. I'll lecture for five to 15 minutes, and then I'll pause and ask a question. Now for me, I've pre-embedded a slide that's got the question on it, uh, along with a little Learning Catalytics logo. And for me, that's a visual cue for me to pause my lecture. And it's also a visual clue for students in the classroom to look down at their device to answer a question. Uh, I'll deliver the question, sometimes a couple of those, at the end of a major topic, and that lets me know how well the students understand what we've just been discussing. Uh, if they understand it, I move on. If they don't, I might stop and do a little re-explaining, or in a special circumstance or two, we might have a group discussion. Um, the next scenario is exam review that I would do for either my face-to-face -face or online students and in that scenario, I use a module type called self-test. Uh, in this scenario, let's imagine I'm giving an exam that covers multiple chapters, and I would put in 15 to 20 questions for each chapter that's going to be on the upcoming exam. My students can log in at any time over several days, and they'll see a whole series of buttons to push for question one, two, three, up to question whatever, question 100. Uh, and as they answer each and every question, and this is my favorite part, they're told every time they answer whether their answer is right or wrong, not at the end of the session, at the end of each question. Um, and when I build a question, if I want to, there's a feedback area, and I can put a description in that feedback area that helps the students understand what they really needed to get that question right. So if they didn't, then they know what to do. Uh, I might put in a detailed paragraph, I might put in just a sentence, or I could even say something like, hey, to really understand this, please go to chapter five and read section 12. So you can really do whatever you want in that feedback area. The last type may be the most fun, and that's in lab. I do a session that I've kind of uh, laughingly called your ticket out the door. My students will spend some time with me in the lab. Uh, they'll go over whatever we need to do. Maybe it's the skeleton, maybe it's a heart lab. And their students are learning all kinds of anatomy in the lab. And they have a session, usually five questions. And I actually make them get all of those right before I let them out the door. So they buy their ticket out the door by answering questions right. I do that with an instructor-led session. So can you tell us what is one of the things you really like the most about learning catalytics and or what you find the most useful? What do I like most about learning catalytics or what's most useful? Let's combine that. Really, my favorite thing and the thing I find most useful about learning catalytics is the variety of question types. There absolutely are multiple choice and short answer and those have their place and I use them to great uh, purpose. But probably my favorite thing is some of the more advanced question types. And for me, teaching anatomy and physiology, I have two favorite questions without a doubt are uh, region and direction. Now let's talk about each of those in turn. Region, great question. Uh, for that, I upload an image myself into the question and then I draw a border around a part of that. So imagine, if you will, a side view of the skull, and I've drawn a border around this part of the skull, and the question is for my student, please touch or click, because I don't know what kind of device they have, the parietal bone on this skull. 
So if they touch inside the border that I drew, they're going to get that answer counted as correct. If not, they're going to get it marked as wrong. Another question type that really leads to some deep thinking for me in physiology is direction. Now, a physicist might call this a vector question, uh, but it really is called in learning catalytics direction. You can use it either way. Uh, we're uh, looking here at the students dragging an arrow across an image that I upload to the question. Let me give you a couple of examples how I use this to teach physiology. Lots of uh, physiology early on for muscle and nerves is looking at cell membrane dynamics. So I might draw a side view of a cell membrane and have ions scattered on either side of that. And the question might be which direction in this particular scenario would potassium flow? And the students can drag an arrow in the direction of movement to tell me that they understand this. And the best part is learning catalytics and actually grade them dragging an arrow in a particular direction. I can determine the angle. If it's, you know, five or 10 degrees off, it'll still be counted right depending on what value I put in there. Uh, another use for that exact question type direction is a view of a neuron. And perhaps I can ask which direction would the action potential travel? And the student drags the arrow in the right direction. And if they get it right, they're gonna get the point. And if not, they're going to have that kind of wrong. Now, another question type that I really do love uh, for very special circumstances is upload image. The students can use the camera on their device and upload an image that answers a question. So a typical question like that for me would be, please take your phone, go to the lab and find an appropriate image and take a photograph of thoracic vertebrae, for instance. If the students get that right, then I'll mark that right on the grade book. Uh, another scenario for that uh, in say a botany or general biology class is maybe to walk out across the campus find say a live oak, a red oak, a white oak tree, and take a photograph of their leaves. Those three different leaves look very distinctly different by the way. So you can do all kinds of things with an image upload question. Absolutely love that one. And then finally, do you have any advice for new instructors, Terry? What are your recommendations? Instructors just getting started. Really my favorite thing to tell you is to just get in there and play. Um, I would also strongly advise getting comfortable with learning catalytics without your students. You're gonna probably have a little bit of nervous jitters as you get started, all of us do. Uh, what I would suggest is build a class. It can be a class your students will never see. Uh, that's perfectly fine. And then build a module. Um, for uh, the layman, you might uh, think of a module as an assignment. In learning catalytics, it's called a module. Build a module, it will be empty at first, and you can add questions from a pretty vast question library that is unique to your discipline. But I would actually suggest in the first trial or two, as you're getting used to it, don't do that. Don't rely on the library. Instead, write your own questions. It really will help get you comfortable with how the system works. Write your own questions. Just get two or three together. And then what I would like you to do is look at your instructor panel in Learning Catalytics and notice near the top right, there's a button called Student View. If you right click that, that's what I do, right click, you can just click it and open it. But I right click and select Open in a New Tab. And at that moment, I've got something pretty magical. I've got an instructor view in one tab and a student view in the other. On the student view, you'll have to enter the session ID that you've got over on your instructor side. And on the instructor side, deliver a question. Now you can answer the question as a student and on the instructor side, see those question responses coming in. Deliver the next question and then back as a student, answer it and back over on the instructor side, see the answers coming in. And the beauty of that is you can see everybody's role. You really get comfortable with what's going on. And if you do that two or three times, then you will walk into your classroom knowing that you can handle that. Uh, there's not gonna be a thing happening that you don't know. There won't be a student question coming in that you don't understand. It will make you a learning catalytics pro in no time at all.